yes, he is good. Next time they're gonna wrap me with barbed wire. <laughs> hey Amen. Uh, this is a great day. Believe me, I'm very happy to be up here and preach to you. Uh, when Pastor told me uh, last week that uh, uh, so many people were going to be out, I said, well, I guess I'm going to be preaching to you. <laughs> and I'm surprised. Thank you for coming and thank you for your patience and thank you for everything. And thank God because he gave us today a great day, isn't it? A great day, I mean. Uh, since this morning, it's, it's been a great day, and and, uh, and I thank God for that. Well, uh, I want to ask you to stand up and look on, this, on, on your Bible that you brought it. And if not, I, I think that they're going to put it up here in the screen for you. And, and find uh, Genesis chapter 4. There's a couple of verses there that... Uh, I want to uh, to uh, uh, read verses verses six and seven only uh, six and seven of chapter four. Amen. Look what it says. Then the Lord said to Cain, "Why are you so angry? Why is your face downcast?" If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. That is a great passage, I would say. You must rule over it. Uh, uh, let's go just to the Lord in prayer for a couple of seconds and then just sit down, okay, and ask you, be patient with me. Father, uh, we want to demonstrate our love to you, God. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you for being the God that you are, awesome in power, mighty in your hands, Lord God, and, and so tender that you watch over us and and take care of us Lord Jesus even though sometimes we don't live according to your commandments and your will please God I pray that you bless us this morning bless my brothers and sisters that are present bless those who are in God for any reason and give us the anointing God I believe that we not only today but all the days of our lives uh, we need to be under the influence of the Holy Spirit, God. Bless us. I pray that you anoint us, God. Anoint our ears, our minds. And help us receive the word, God. And, and apply it to our life. And, and, and put it into practice, God. And in the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Uh, have a seat. And, and uh, like I told you, be patient with me. Well, uh, it's not difficult for you to, to notice that uh, the passage we just read, it was in the beginning, pretty much right after the beginning of creation. Uh, Cain and Abel uh, were the, the only, well, not the only son, but sons of, of Adam and Eve. And they grew up in... They went in different directions. One of them was a uh, keeper of the sheep, uh, and the other one was a farmer. Was a farmer, and and uh, and the Bible says that uh, both of these guys uh, uh, present an offering to God. They came with an offering, and. Uh, I assume that they did this because they saw their parents doing it. They saw Adam and Eve that they were uh, sacrificing the Holocaust and, uh, and offering to God offerings for their sins, for their uh, life and stuff like that. And it was a ritual, I believe, that uh, it was common in the first family of, of our fathers in, in the Garden of Eden. It was common. But uh, they came with, with different offerings. The Bible says that Abel picked up 
the best of his sheep, one of the best lambs in the, in the, in the flock, he brought it to God and offered him to God and, 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 the, and the smoke of that offering uh, went up to heaven and, and, and I imagine that God smelled it. And the Bible said that it was, it was pleasing God, to him. He pleased to God the sacrifice of Abel. On the other hand, the, uh, uh, Cain came and, and with, with, uh, with uh, some of the fruit of the earth and put him in, in, in an holocaust too and, and, and sacrificed it to God. It was an offering of, 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 the, of uh, our culture, I would say. And, uh, and, and God didn't, didn't accept it, didn't like it. We found out later on that uh, uh, it is not because the, the, the offerings of, of, uh, of uh, fruits and vegetables uh, were, not, were not reasonable to offer it to God. But the Bible says that uh, God didn't take that offering because the heart of evil, of, of Cain, was evil, was bad. In other words, I, I assume that uh, he didn't care. He didn't care what kind of offering. He just, he just picked up whatever he found on his way. And my, maybe it wasn't the best of the, of the field. But it was just anything, anything that was good or not. Who cares? It's for God. It's for God. Uh, that tells me that uh, it, it, it matters. It matters the attitude of our heart when we come to God. It tells me that uh, the God is interesting in your heart. And, and rightfully so because in the, and later on in the Bible you find passages that says, Give me your heart. Ain't that interesting? God is asking for our heart. Not for our mind, not for our body, not for anything of that. Give me your heart. And there are, uh, there are uh, several reasons for that. Not only one or two, but several reasons. Because Jeremiah says that the heart is deceitful. Deceitful. And by the way, let me tell you this. You cannot trust your heart. Because when you when you speak when when you speak about about the heart, it means your emotions, it means your feelings, it means man, many things, and, and, and most of the times they're not controlled, they're not under the control of the Holy Spirit. Give me your heart. Don't forget that. Give God your heart. Amen. Surrender it to God. Not one time. Do it throughout your whole life, every day if possible. Amen. Because we never know what our reactions are going to be. It is very important that God control the, the, that muscle in your, in your, inside your body that gives life to the rest, to the rest of, of, of you. It is very important. These two guys learned, lived, uh, 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 pretty much a believer's life. Adam believed in God, the same as Eve, because they were created by him. Put in, 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 in the garden, and you know what happened with the snake and all that. I'm not going to get into that. But they understood that they owe something to God. Amen. That they owe something and the, 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 it was necessary for them to respond, to answer properly to the intervention of God in their lives. Very important. We must do the same thing. We must be responsible to God. You are, you are not just a product of the flesh. No, God made you. Amen. Hallelujah. God made you, and the Bible says that He made you in His image. Yes. In, the, in, the, in, the, in the image of God. It is, it is, uh, it's, it's your heart, it's your mind, it's your body. Let me tell you, all that, all that is in the image of God. Amen. Amen. And, and therefore, since we are different from animals, 
Since we are different from, from any other creation, God desires something from you. Desire, he is waiting for a response, a positive response from you. He's waiting for you to, to come up, like, maybe like, like the prodigal son, uh, come to your senses and say to yourself, I owe something to God. And start surrendering it, surrendering it to God. Hallelujah. And this is not just coming to shores. This is a personal relationship with God. It means that you engage yourself. Hallelujah. With God in a personal matter. In a personal uh, uh, matter where you respond to God's command. When is your, is your desire, hallelujah. When you desire in your heart to please God. Why? Let me tell you why this is very important. When, when, the, when the people of Israel were coming into the promised land, in, in the book of Deuteronomy, Moses wrote these words from God. God told the people, I said before you good and evil. I said before you life and death. Hallelujah. And I like this. And God told them, choose life that you may live. You see, uh, so when I read that passage, I say, uh, oh man, it seems like God is telling you, is telling us, uh, don't be dumb. Choose life. Sh make the right choice. Hallelujah. Be smart. Be intelligent. Hallelujah. Don't, don't do it with, with your flesh. Because the flesh goes against the will of God. Go in with, with, the, with God's commandment, hallelujah. Live for him. Make the right decision, not only one time, throughout your whole life. Yeah. Hallelujah. It is a good idea to ask God what plans he has for me. And believe me, he will surprise you. He surprised me, uh, surprised me. When I was in an in in accounting school in Phoenix, and God surprised me to, and told, get me out of that school and took me to a Bible school to learn the Bible. Hallelujah. And, and, and what an adventure it has been. Man, for the next several years, I spent several days of my life under the influence of men and women that loved God, they, that taught me. How to respect God, how to honor, how to preach the word, how to respect the word, hallelujah, and make a good interpretation of it. That, that was great. You see, I was expecting that. Maybe what now I, I would have been a, a good CPA working some, in, in, in some office there somewhere. But God pulled me out of that and took me to a Bible college. It was a surprise. Of course it was a surprise. Many years before that, hallelujah, he surprised me because I was thinking of making plans to die an alcoholic in AP. And the Lord, hallelujah, had different plans for me. He saved me. He saved me. He brought me to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Allowed me for, for, for three or four years to go to another Bible school in Mexico. Hallelujah. And you know what? You know what? Put me in the right path going to heaven. Hallelujah. 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 And like a, the people says, you can't be that. Amen. You can't be that. Hallelujah. But you see, you must respond. I was telling Pastor Tito and Pastor, Pastor Pete the other day, when we come to Christ, we want to come to him in his own terms, like he wants us to come. Not the way we feel, not the way we want. We must come to him his way. Yes. His way. Because, like my, my boss told us one time when I was driving buses in, in Phoenix, he told us, well, you do it my way or the highway. Hallelujah. <laughs> so we had to do it her way. If you wanted to work that same way we got, same way, 
That's why the Bible says there's no salvation in any other one but in Christ. Is Christ is our only Savior. Amen. Hallelujah. And church is the great establishment that, that he left for us. Only church can provide for, for all of us the right direction to have it. Only church can straight our mind and, and our hearts. When we come to church and listen to the word of God, let me tell you something happened in your heart. Amen. Hallelujah. We, when we accept it, when we apply it to our lives, hallelujah, things change. Hallelujah. And, and the corrupt man, the corrupt woman, the Bible says, turns into a new creation. Amen. Praise God. It's like just like a, like the, the the Lord told the 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 the, the, the sinner woman that he, that he met in in the Bible. The Bible said that that uh, they were trying to to stun her. Hallelujah! And and everybody left, and the Lord stood with her alone, and asked her, "Nobody condemns you. Nobody. They're all gone. Neither do I condemn you." That was, that was great. Neither do I, because the Lord didn't come to condemn the world, but so the world will be saved through him. Neither do I. And then he told him these beautiful words, go and see no more. That's great, Brother Felix. You know what was, God was telling this lady? Go and change your way to do business. From now on, forget about that adultery thing. Forget about all that. From now on, restrain yourself from the flesh and live for God. Hallelujah. And you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if when we go to heaven, we find that lady there. I wouldn't be surprised. Hallelujah. Why? Because he surrounded, to, she surrounded his, him, herself to God. He gave himself to, to Christ. Hallelujah. And it was a great change. How I want to think, even though the Bible don't say uh, nothing about her anymore, I want to think that she left everything to follow Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's what the Lord wants us to do. Amen. Hallelujah. It is not, not anymore what I live, says Paul, but it's Christ who lives in me. Yes. It's Christ. What a difference. Hallelujah. Why? Because we see things from a different perspective. I remember telling this, this, this man that used to, to go to church. Hallelujah. He was telling me that, that he hated this person. And he wanted, I think she, she told me that he wanted to kill him or something. Like that. You know what? We Christians don't do business like that. We don't. Why? Because Christ is in our hearts, in our lives. He changed everything. That's why the Bible says He is a new creation. Everything passed. And God made a new bunch of things, hallelujah, for you to walk in. For you to put into practice. And believe me, you don't need no more. Because just doing the will of God will keep you busy for the rest of your life. Amen. The rest of your life, hallelujah. And what an adventure that has been. Well, that's pretty much what, uh, what God told Cain after he didn't accept the, the sacrifice of Cain. He got angry. He got mad against God. Just like anybody else that acts on the flesh. Just like anybody that that leaves shores and don't come back to shores because something happened. Because he was not well, well received. Hallelujah, in shores. Because somebody made, made a comment and he, he think that they were talking about it. And they left shores and let me tell you, most of them haven't come back yet. Haven't. Hallelujah, and that is sad. This man was angry with God. 
How is it that, that God accepted Abel's sacrifice and he didn't accept mine? That's the first thing that, uh, that anybody said, these people says. Why God is, is good with them and why is not good with me? I brought a sacrifice too. But you see, the attitude of the heart was different. Hallelujah. I want to think that Abel wanted to please God. Wanted to, to, to please God, hallelujah, and, and do his will. And it wasn't easy for him. You know what? Because life is hard on us. Hallelujah, it's hard. You know, we all be struggling in life for, for so many years. And if you want, let me tell you, life will give you many... Let me, let me find the right word. Many excuses for you not to come back to church. Many excuses for you not to serve God anymore. Oh, I don't like that person that is in there that sits next to me in church. I don't like what pastor or, 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 the, or the deacon or something told me in the church. I don't like that. Therefore, I'm not coming back. It's so easy. Hey, you know what? The enemy is with, uh, with his arms like that, waiting for you. But not for good. He's waiting there for you to destroy you. To destroy your hope. To destroy your belief in God. To destroy everything that you've been getting in church. Hallelujah. And the worst thing about it is that a lot of people are, are falling in that game. Makes me sad. Makes me sad because so many people with great potentials are not insured no more. Are not insured. Why? Because they got involved in this, in this, in this matter. They pay more, more attention to the enemy. Hallelujah. Or simply the, the, the world was more attractive than, to, 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 to him or to them than church. Oh, in the world, we can do anything we want. Of course you can. What the enemy don't tell you, is that the, the, the enemy, what the enemy don't, don't tell you, is that the world is like a ship full of people that is sinking. And everybody in that ship is going to die. And the enemy tell, comes and tells you, you can do anything you want. You want to live your life, you will live it your way. It doesn't matter. When you start breaking the whole ship, break it, who cares? But he don't tell you that pretty soon the whole ship is going to sink. And you're going down with them too. Ain't that sad? That's, that's the attitude of Cain. That's why God told him, God, Abel, Cain. He told, let, let, let me read it to you one more time. Hallelujah. What is your face downcast? Why? Why are you angry with God? What happened to you? Hmm? Why are you angry with God? Well, you don't know what happened to me in that church. Somebody, somebody made a bad, bad face to me. Huh? Somebody laughed about me in that church. You don't know that. No, I don't. I don't know what happened to you in church. You know, but I know my God. I know my God. And I know that if whatever the, the, the end, the people do to me or the enemy do to me I can go to God and find refuge in his arms yes. there's, there's a classic book that for some reason I haven't bought it yet it's called In His, in his Steps it's a great book it speaks about, about a church in Chicago at one time this this uh, this man came out of shoes and, 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 and sat on the steps of the, of, the, of the door at the entrance of the shoes. And he was crying and sad because practically they kicked him out. They, they, they kicked him out of the shoes. And he didn't notice. But the Lord came and, and, and sat 
he sat down right next to him. And the Lord told him, what are you so sad? What happened, oh Lord? You don't know what happened in this church. I helped build this church. I've been here for so many years. And just a few minutes ago, the board of directors and the pastor bought, bought, it, bought it to kick me out. And that's, that, that hurts in my heart. And the Lord told him, hey, don't worry. They kicked me out many years ago. <laughs> that is sad, ain't it? But believe me, it's happened in many churches. In many churches. One of my prayers for the past days, in my, in my, in my devotional with God, I told God, God, Send a revival to our churches. Amen. Send revival to, to, to my colleagues, ministers, to our pastors. Hallelujah. Come on. Make them be zealous of God, about God. Make them be true when they preach. Put love in them for the, for the flock. Hallelujah. Don't let them go pagan and, and, and uh, filled with, with uh, a lot of modern stuff that you don't want in the church. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Because now we can find, look at this, our problem for this century, for these years, it is not whether we go into the world as a church, but our problem is that, uh, that the world is coming into our church. The way we act, the way we minister. Hallelujah. The problem is not whether the people from out there is going to hell. The problem is the people from inside the church is going to hell too. Amen. And that is sad. And if you've been around in a church for, for some years, you must agree with that. It is sad. We're losing ground. We're losing more and more ground in the world. Ground where will never be conquered again. Why? Because we get so involved on modernizing our, our praise and worship. A friend of mine, a pastor friend of mine told me, Ernesto, the other day we had something uh, uh, special in the shoes. And, and, and I, uh, I played in the shoes uh, some... some uh, 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 how would you call it? Mundane music. Non-Christian music. Hallelujah. Now we're dancing in the church. And I don't mean dancing in the spirit. We're dancing in the flesh. Yes. Hallelujah. Now we're not, we're, not, we're not speaking in tongues or worshiping God no more. No. Now we're just giving the people what they want. And we cannot that, do that. God never called us to please people. He called us to please Him. Amen. Hallelujah. To be in agreement with Him. And if you want, you want to go to heaven, you must come to Christ in His own terms. Yes. He will tell you, you must humble yourself. Humble yourself. Yes. Because if you don't come with humility, yes. He won't take that. Oh, but He is love. Yeah, He is love. But He is a God of order. He is a God of judgment. Hallelujah. He is a God that wants things to be, to be right, to be His way. Hallelujah. Not the way you want. Not like Cain that came, came to God with, with just anything from the field. No. Be like Cain. He picked the best. Hallelujah. And the Bible said, He picked up the best. Amen. Give your best to the Lord. Amen. What do you have? I don't know, but give it to God. Give your life, hallelujah. Give your life to God. Give your family to God. Many times, hallelujah. Many times I used to do more and more back then when my, when my children used to live with me. In my house, I used to go room by room where they were sleeping. Hallelujah, because I always was the last to, to go to bed. In the middle of the night, I, I, I go to room by room, hallelujah. 
and put my hands on, on, on them, or on the beds where, on the beds where they slept, and to God, bless these children. Bless, fill every room of my house with your presence, hallelujah. Amen. Don't we need that? Hallelujah. Don't we need to tell God like Joshua told him? God, uh, he told the people, you choose who you're going to serve. You want to serve idols, there are plenty around to choose. Pick one. Pick the ones that we left in Egypt. Pick the one that, that Abraham worshipped on the other side of the river. Pick the ones from the land where you're entering right now. But look at this. As long as I live, me and my house, we're going to serve God. Hallelujah. <coughs> Hallelujah. And let me add this. We're going to serve God when it's convenient and when it's not convenient. Hallelujah. Amen. When the wind blows from this side and when it's coming from this side either, and it's not gonna, nothing is going to change. We're going to serve God. Yes. Hallelujah. They might criticize you. They might make fun of you. Many years ago, in my first days of, of, of being saved, I was walking, walking to church with my two daughters in my hands and my Bible under my arm here. And we had to cross this, this field where the, some guys were playing baseball. And I look at them. And you know what? Most of them were my ex-friends. Friends, friends that I, that I that I met in in, in in the world, in bars and and, and ballrooms and doing whatever garbage they do in the world. And I, I saw him and said, "Oh, these guys, these guys are going to make fun of." Him. Yes, they did. They came to me and told Ernesto, bunch of ignorance too. They told me, "So you became Alibaba." I don't know what I live about me, what they meant by that. But they meant, I guess, that you became Christians. And I, and, and I told them, yes, I did. I did. I'm going to church now. You know what? One of them told me, you're not going to last. If you're a guaynito, <laughs> you like too much to drink. You're a drunk person. And they are right, they, they were right because they, uh, I drank many times with them. Guess what? It's been over 40 years from that, since that day. Yeah. Praise God! Praise God! Praise God! Praise God! Yeah. We're still here. Yeah. We're still in church serving God. It hasn't been easy, but it has been very rewarding. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because the Lord, many times when I'm sad, hallelujah, I go to the Lord and He hugs me and embraces me and tells me, don't be afraid, that's the way it's going to be. I remember this, this young lady, she was in our Bible school one time, well, she was a student too. And she was going through many difficulties and divorce and all that stuff. And, and uh, he was testifying to us. He told us, one night I was feeling so depressed and so lonely and so downcast because things were going so bad. And I say to myself, I need somebody to hug me. I need a hug. And she was pretty much in this position. I cannot do it all the way because me caigo. <laughs> Hallelujah. She was like that with his hands, his arms around her knees. In that position, she said that she felt like somebody coming to her and hug her. <laughs> that has been our experience. My God, many times have come to us. Hallelujah. It tells me you're not wasting your time in serving God. I never told you that it was going to be easy, but I, I tell you right now, it is possible. Hallelujah. 
excuse my my emotions. You see what I mean? He never told us that it was going to be easy. He never told us that you're going to have fun. He never told you that. Nothing like that. Hold the opposite. Hallelujah. When you became Christians, and you haven't yet, when you become Christians, believe me, the world becomes your enemies. The world becomes your enemy. I feel so sorry for ladies that are coming to church and serving God, and the husband is an unbeliever. I feel sorry for them. You know why? Because they are sleeping with the enemy. Yes. It is true. Why? Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Because the spirit that is in you is not on you with your mate. There is a different spirit in the other person. Hallelujah. But <laughs> Excuse me. But don't let that be something that will stop you from serving God. There is great reward for you. Look what the Bible says. Things that have not come into the imagination of man. Hallelujah. You know what that means? You don't have a clue. You don't have an idea. Are the ones that God has prepared for those who loved him. We don't know. We don't know, hallelujah. Some people, oh, heaven is going to be all singing and stuff. We're going to sing to, to the Lord 24 hours a day. And it's full of, of green pastures and, 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 and green trees all over. And it's, no, that's a lie. You don't have an idea what heaven is going to be like. You don't know. Get ready. Because when we get to heaven, listen to me. When we get to heaven, 10,000 years are going to pass. Hallelujah. 10,000 or even more. And God is going to reveal himself to you. Isn't that wonderful? Hallelujah. And throughout the rest of the centuries, throughout the rest of the centuries, if time can be measured in heaven, he will never finish revealing himself to you. Amen. Hallelujah. So brace yourself to that. I got so many questions, so many doubts in my, in my mind. And I say, when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask God. When I get to heaven, I'm going to ask God, God, why this, why that, why, why it was like this? But you know, I think too that uh, when I get to heaven and we can see the splendor of God, we're going to say, God, you know what? Never mind. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> because the Bible says that he's going to clean to wipe your tears from your eyes. The Bible says that he's going to be our shepherd. He's going to be our pastor. Hallelujah. No more deceit. No more anger. No more nothing like that. Why? Because we're going to be in the presence of God. My time is running out already. And I'm barely warming up. Hallelujah. Why is your face downcast? Why is it? If, if you do what is right, would you not be unaccepted? That's a rhetorical question. Rhetorical questions usually are the ones that, that, the, that the answer is pretty obvious. Of course, if you do good, God will accept you. If you, if you do wrong, let me tell you, no matter how you do it, God is not going to accept you. Is, is that clear? I'm asking you this because, because it is not just the intention. It's doing things the, gay, the way God wants us to do it. Remember when they were bringing the, the Ark of the Covenant back from, to Israel from the, from the Philistines? They were rejoicing. They put it pretty much like a, 
in a platform and it's being, it was being pulled by two, two or three oxes, I believe. And one man, Perez, his name was, was Usa, I'm sorry, it was Usa, touched the Ark of the Covenant. He touched it and he died because, because the Ark was going to, to fall from the uh, from the from the, that uh, a trailer or platform where he was being carried, and he died. And as God, uh, David asked God, "Why did this happen? You know why it happens? It, even though it's, it seems cruel, because God established one way for the for the ark to be carried. He was supposed to be touched." No man supposed to touch this, this uh, like pretty much like eight by, by four feet bags that, uh, that they were carrying. You see why? Because God wants things to do done His way. Hallelujah. That's why it's very important that you keep coming to sure that you study the scripture to know the will of God and do things the way God wants us to. Obviously, Cain knew about that. Cain knew that he won, he had to do things right. And yet he couldn't care less. He just went and grabbed anything from the field and brought him to God. You know what? God is asking you for your best. Your best, hallelujah. Whatever it is, maybe your best is not like my best. Maybe my best is less than yours, hallelujah. But whether it's more or less, we're supposed to bring to God our best. Yes. Amen. And God will accept it. Even though your best is not as good as mine. Don't forget that. That's why I'm repeating to you. We must come to God His way. The way He wants to. Not the way we want. Not the way we perceive. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says that the best that we can offer in our own. It is like filthy rags in the presence of God. Filthy rags. Can you imagine that? Who takes that away from me? Why? Because it stinks. And those are our works, our works. The way we do things. That's why God gave us His Word, our Constitution, our Bible, our guide, to learn how to please God. And many people are not doing it, even in churches. That makes me sad. Well, well let me move on. You will be accepted. But if you don't do what is right, if you don't do what is right, you see what I mean? Look what it says, sin is crouching at the door. You know what that means? I was reading that uh, in, in another version. It says, sin is knocking at the door. It's not only knocking, it's pushing the door to enter into your property. And let me apply this. Sin is, is, is pushing the door to enter into your heart. Hallelujah. To deviate you from God. Sin is in front of you. Hallelujah. He's, he's asking you asking you for name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He wants to enter into your heart and mess up the, 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 not only your life, but your family, your house, the nation. Hallelujah. And I can tell you, the way the world looks nowadays lately, man, many people are falling from that, for that. There's so many sinners. Man, I was telling somebody some months ago, the, uh, the evil that we used to do when we were young, you know, uh, we, never, we never were so bad. But you know what? Comparing to the things that our kids are doing nowadays, it was, it, it was nothing. It was nothing. Remember that? One of the greatest evil that I did, it was to, to, to go to, to Doña Shu, that was, that was her name, Doña Shu's house, and steal pieces from her. 
two or three peaches and then we jump over the fence into the, into the holly and go eating, eating peaches. That was it. Now our kids are carrying guns into the school. They're killing people. Not only here, in other countries too. They, I found out that those sicarios in Mexico are kids 13, 14, and even 12 years old. And they're killing people. Hallelujah. You see, we never thought of, of, of using drugs back in, back in those days. Never thought. I remember there was a, a family of marijuanos next to our, not, not next to our house, but a few blocks from it. And when they say, the Jaramillos, they oh, the Jaramillos are smoking pot. Oh, don't get close to, to, to the house. We were scared about that. Now they're smoking pot all over the place. And not only that, hallelujah, they're doing all kinds of drugs. And most of them are kids. I was surprised to hear in a documentary some days ago that, that some kids are, 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 are uh, using drugs at the age of eight years old. Come on, we never thought of that. Man, I grew up very poor in a house when almost there was no food. And we were in love with life because we didn't have nothing to, to, to fall in love with. And we never thought of doing that stuff. Never. We were playing with, with trompos. I don't know if you guys know what chapetes are. We were playing chapetes, hallelujah. <laughs> you guys don't know nothing about that stuff. I'm talking to you when the... When the... The crust of the earth was fresh, was warm to the Many years ago, things have changed a lot. And when I think about that, it worries me a lot. Can you imagine the world, the evil that my grandkids are going to inherit? What are we talking about right now? It's going to be like, 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 like child play. God knows. I don't want to be around. I hope the Lord comes much, much sooner than that. And take us from this world that lost its way many years ago. And take us to heaven. Let me close with this. I, I, I got another scripture that I want to read. So you don't blame God for nothing that happens to you. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, I believe it is. Look what it says. Chapter uh, 7, verse 28, about pretty much there. Yes. 29 says, This only I have found. God created mankind upright. You see, you were made upright. I was upright too. That's the way he created man. And look what it says not. But they have gone in search of many schemes. In Spanish, I like, I like the Spanish version. It says they get into, into, into a lot of trouble. You see, it is, it is us. We made the world the way the world is right now. We are in the situation that we are because we got into it. And let me tell you, the only one to blame for all this is you. So don't blame God. Don't tell God, why, why, where were you when this happened? Where were you when this other thing? Where were you when we needed you? No, we are in this mess. We made this mess out of the world because we want it. People wanted it like that. Hallelujah. Maybe that's why we have those, all, those, all those politicians in Washington. Washington is the only place where you run a hundred miles and still on the crime scene. Hallelujah. It is, it is true. It is true. Hallelujah. Beware of that. Don't be like the world. You are not of the world. You've been cleansed. Hallelujah. 
That's what the, the Lord told this, this lady that I talked to you a while ago. That's what the Lord told him. Hey, you've been in this problem for many years. From now on, change the way you do business. Hey, we must do that. Change the way you are. Train your, your mind, train your, your heart, hallelujah, to do good, even though when we have that, that natural tendency to go the wrong way. Amen. Hallelujah. Worship God. We serve God. Hallelujah. When the, when the sun is shining and when it's cloudy too. Whether the, blow, the wind blows from this side or from this other side, serve God. Amen. At the end, Hallelujah. We're going to end up winning. Let me close with this. How many times have I said that I want to close? Two times? Okay, two more. <laughs> There's this story about this, this old couple of missionaries that were coming back from God knows where, one of those countries of the world that in poverty, serving God as the missionaries. Somewhere in Africa, I believe it was. And they were flying over to the States. And, when, and, and, and with them, in, in, in the same plane, there was a politician. And they landed in God knows where in, in, in the States. And, and, and where they landed was a big band and a big crowd yelling and, and all excited because this politician man was coming to, to, the, to, to the place, to the, to the area, you know, and they made a big deal for that. And, and the missionary, the man, felt kind of, kind of, kind of sad, you know. And, and, and he told to his wife, look at that. They're cheering for this man that, that are coming to, to the city. And nobody's cheering from us. Nobody. Just because he's coming back home to, to the place where, the, where he lived. And the lady told this missionary, you know what, honey? We're not home yet. And, and that is true. We are not home yet. Hallelujah. <laughs> but one, one of these days, the creator of all things are going to come for us. Amen. And he'll take us to heaven. <laughs> not, not, not for just one minute or two minutes of rejoicing. No. For eternity. Amen. For eternity. That's why I told you a while ago. You don't have a clue what heaven is like. God has beautiful things for you. Don't don't miss them. Don't lose them. Hallelujah. Like I told you before, I don't know your life. I don't know your troubles. But I know God. I know God. And since I met him, my life has changed radically. I'm ready to go to heaven. I'm ready to go to heaven. That's why I told you when the last time I preached, I believe it was. Let me repeat this just today. I promise you I won't say it again till next time I preach. <laughs> when you enter into heaven, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You're going to see a beautiful creature. The dog walk is not going to be walking like that. It's going to have new wings. New wings, beautiful blonde hair. Blonde hair. White. With a white rock flying in the corner. And you're going to stare at it. Hallelujah. Who is that? Who is that guy? Is that Hermano Barajas? <laughs> Get ready for that. Get ready for that. Because you're not gonna, the Bible says that not all of us are going to die. But we all are going to be transformed. 
Our body is going to change in the likeness of God. Immortal, ready for heaven. This body that you have cannot enter into heaven because the Bible says the flesh and blood cannot enter into the kingdom of God. But, but when he transforms us, Hallelujah, she changes us into his image, immortal, will be ready to spend eternity in heaven. You want to do that? Hallelujah. Maybe I'm repeating myself too much on this. Maybe. But again, again, I don't know your troubles. I'm pretty sure that all of us have troubles. Doubts? You have doubts? Oh, I struggle with that many times. Many times I spent hours questioning God, asking God, why this, why that? Yes. I have my own problems, and some of them are, man, are really bad. But I thank God that every time that that happened, we come from God stronger. You doubt, take him to God. Believe me, believe me what I'm going to tell you. Those times when you have questions for, questions for God, when you have doubts in your mind and in your heart, those are healthy times. They're healthy. Hallelujah, because if you are honest, if you are not sinning with God, and it's your honest question in God. God comes to you and is going to answer all your questions and your doubts that you have in your heart. Amen. And when you get out from that situation, man, where are you, devil? Where are you? We're ready to, for another round. Come on, where is it? What I'm trying to tell you, you're going to emerge stronger. Amen. Stronger. Hallelujah. And all those doubts are going to disappear. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Okay. That was my last time that I told you that I'm going to close. I'm closing right now. Stand up. Please stand up. Hallelujah. With all my heart, I would like you to come to the altar. Don't act like you, you don't have any trouble. Don't act like that. Come on, don't give me that. I know that you have them. Don't tell me that you don't have any questions. I know that you do. Don't tell me that your life is perfect. Because I've been around for 25, no, no, 57 years. No, 67 years. <laughs> and I know I'm still struggling. I'm still struggling. Just like you do. Not because I'm behind the pulpit. I'm a special person. No. No, the enemy attacks us every time. He has caught us by surprise many times. But in all of them, in all those times, God has been strong with us. Hallelujah. Can I tell you just one more thing before I go? Just one last thing, okay? Paul was testifying in Jerusalem with, with, uh, with Felix and King Agrippa and Bernice. Bernice was the wife of King Agrippa. And, uh, and he did a great job. And the Lord came to him. Uh, I believe that Paul felt like, a, like a, uh, maybe disappointed. He must to say to himself, I'm not doing a good job here. But God came to him and told him, Paul, don't worry. Just like you testify in Jerusalem, I want you to go and testify in Rome. And Paul God uh, spent two more years in jail. After two more years in jail, he, he got into a ship that sailed through the Mediterranean in to throw all the, uh, the uh, Achaia region and, and Corinth and Ephesus and all that stuff. He sailed to, in, in that sea. In the middle of the road, 
He had a shipwreck. The whole ship was lost. I don't know how, but 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 uh, they, they they got into this island, and for 14 days the Bible says the sun didn't shine. It was raining every day. Paul was looking for some wood to build to build a fire to warm up, and a snake, and a snake, cut his hand and beat him. The people from the island said, "Oh, this man." Is going to die. The undertaker came and measured Paul's body. Okay, three feet plus this and that to make the 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 the, the what you call it the uh, casket. the casket because he was going to die. And, and, and they continue their trip from that island. Nothing happened to him, even though the snake was poisonous. And uh, he came to Rome. He got to Rome. And for the next several months until they killed him, he was testified in front of Nero, the archie enemy of the gospel. He was testifying to the, to the believers in, in Rome. You know why? Because God told, her, told him, the same way that you testify in Rome, I mean in Jerusalem, you're going to do it in Rome. I want you there. The Lord told his disciples, don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. I want you to be where I am. Amen. And that's the promise for you and for me. God wants us to be where he is right now. Amen. You understand that? Yes. Praise God. Just bow your head and have a word of prayer. Do you need to make things right with God? Do it. Do it. Hallelujah. I'm not going to ask you to come forward. I'm not going to ask you nothing like that. This is between you and God. If you are in a spiritual bankruptcy, tell to God, God, I'm bankrupt. You have doubts in your mind. Tell God, no, Lord, I got problems believing this. I got doubts concerning this and that. Tell him, be honest with him. Hallelujah. And watch out because in the next, in the, in the days to come, he's going to work with you and address those, those doubts and those things that are troubling you directly with you. We love you, God. We love you. Father, we just want to ask you for your presence. Come on, talk to God. Talk to God. Don't tell me that you don't need it because I know that you do. Just as much as I do we need him too. We need you, God. We need you more than ever. Hallelujah. I want to tell you that we disagree with so many things in this world. Hallelujah. We disagree with a lot of stuff that is going on in our, in our country. Not only with the politicians, God, but in our churches, with our pastors, God, with our ministers, with our brethren in, 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 in the set on the pews, God, please. Send revival to us. Straight up our minds, our thoughts, hallelujah. And guide them through this world that is that has lost its way many years ago. Our church needs you, God. Our pastor needs you too. Hallelujah. Keep us holy, firm and from you. Expecting that day when the heavens will open. And you called us up to be with you. Oh God, how we need that. How we need that, Lord, today. Be especially sweet to those who are struggling with health problems. With their families. To those who cannot, don't seem to find an answer for, for the matters of life. 
Lord, the answer is found in you. Bless those intellectuals, God, in their minds. Guide them to the truth that is found in you. Reveal yourself, God, to every one of us. We need you more than ever. We need you more than ever, God. Our families need you. Our wives need you, God. The husbands need you. And those who don't have a husband, God, God needs you the most. Be the husbands that they need. Be God the companion, hallelujah. On those lonely nights, hallelujah. <laughs> Just be with them, God, I pray. Be with them. And the rest of us, God, keep us straight. Always looking up to heaven. Where the help comes from. We praise you. We thank you, God. As we walk out from this place, please. Go, go with us, God. Go with us. Go to our houses. Go to whatever we, we go, God. Go to those who work tomorrow. Go with them. Be with those who are absent today in our church. We pray all this in the name of our Lord and Savior, who only is holy, who is the one, hallelujah, we bow down to, who will take us to heaven one of these days. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our Master, we pray. Thank you, God. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to stay here for a few more minutes. If you need prayer, come on. I would like to pray for you. And if not, consider yourself this means, please. God bless you and thank you for your patience.